So far, the best RPG for the Switch, in my opinion, is Mario Plus Rabbids. The game isn't fantastic, and people including myself thought it would be bad simply because it features Rabbids, but I saw some gameplay, and I actually liked it. In fact, I hold it up as one of the Switch's best games so far, and apparently other people agree. But if you take Nintendo's main mascot Mario and mix it with RPG, you would get Super Mario RPG, or as it's now known as, Paper Mario. The way I'm going to structure this video is I'm going to give you a bit of history on Paper Mario, which shouldn't take long, and then I'll go into why the Switch needs a game like Paper Mario. So Paper Mario started when Super Mario RPG 2 was officially cancelled. On August 11th, 2000, Paper Mario, the spiritual successor to Super Mario RPG, officially released and about a year later, it had been fully distributed. The game was critically acclaimed and had very, very positive feedback. In Japan, in one short week, the game sold almost 300,000 copies. That's in one country. In one week, Nintendo Life gave the game a 10 out of 10 rating, IGN gave it a 9 out of 10, the Japanese magazine company Famitsu gave the game a 33 out of 40, and overall it was one of Nintendo's best games. It was released for the Nintendo 64, and was brought to the Virtual Console on the Wii in 2007 and on the Wii in 2015. It was also one of the games that came with Nintendo's small Chinese plug and play console, the iQ Player. Even though the game got praised over and over, it took Nintendo until 2004 to make their sequel to Paper Mario. In Japan, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door released on July 22, 2004. It was finished being distributed in other countries in November of that same year. Like its predecessor, it received massive critical acclaim, with some even holding it higher than the original Paper Mario. This game, along with the original Paper Mario, set the bar very high for upcoming sequels. And I'm sure Nintendo knew that. So Nintendo's sequel to Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door? Well, it's, uh, Super Paper Mario for the Wii. Now the game doesn't look bad at all, and the reviews were lower than the past two games, but they were still pretty high up. It got an average of 4 out of 5, which is pretty good. Nintendo didn't necessarily disappoint with this game, that's not what I'm trying to get at, but they definitely did not match the previous two games when it comes to reviews. If you think this game is the best Paper Mario, that's totally fine. In fact, let me know that in the comments and I'll try to reply to you. After that game, it starts to become clear that Paper Mario can't always live up to its previous expectations. Paper Mario Sticker Star came out for the 3DS in 2012, and it got good reviews, it averaged 75%, which Again, isn't bad by any means, but like the previous game in the Paper Mario series, it didn't live up to its expectations. People's biggest problem with this game is how the previous battle system was replaced, because according to developers who worked on the game, it interfered with the sticker star element in the game. Nintendo kept innovating in ways that had either been repeated before, or just didn't make sense for this game. Lots of people also think one of the game's biggest flaws is the fact that you have to do a lot of backtracking, which, while I haven't tried Paper Mario, which I'll get into in a second, I understand how annoying and frustrating that can be when you're in an area and you can't figure out what to do. This is a major problem in a lot of RPGs. Since the game had the lowest reviews of any Paper Mario game, Nintendo would, as you would hope, focus on what made the game fun in the first place, right? Well, they kinda did. The next game was Paper Mario Color Splash for the Wii U. That game came out in 2016 and was known to have improved upon Paper Mario's Sticker Star, but also reused a lot of annoying aspects about Sticker Star that people just didn't want. And Metacritic only gave it a 1% increase over Sticker Star. It hasn't been a letdown, because from what I've heard, it looks fun and the visuals look outstanding, but it's just not what people wanted. Which brings me to the main topic I want to discuss. Is Paper Mario coming to the Switch? Honestly, I think Nintendo has a new Paper Mario planned. 
I wouldn't expect it to come out until the end of the Switch's lifespan, but I think this time Nintendo will know what they're doing, I hope. The three most recent Paper Marios have been setting the bar lower and lower and lower. So I think Nintendo finally will just realize that people want a Thousand Year Door, not a sticker star. Now people don't want a clone of Thousand Year Door, they just want a game that can provide the same experience that game did. And I honestly think if people keep shouting at Nintendo louder and louder, they will finally realize what they're doing wrong and why their recent Paper Mario games have been failing to impress. I've never played any Paper Mario game. I really want to, and I want to try every one of them because I gotta give them a fair chance. I'm not a Nintendo fanboy or a hater, I promise you that, but Nintendo has been changing their future for the better with the Switch recently, even if they aren't doing it every time. The point I'm trying to get across is that I want the next Paper Mario to be a fun and enjoyable experience, but not a frustrating mess of an experience. If Nintendo does make an enjoyable experience, I think we will know if Nintendo is truly listening to the fans. It's clear that they're not listening to their fans every time, but they are more than ever recently. Not to mention, I think that the next Paper Mario shouldn't utilize any gimmicks, as I call it. I've heard bad things about Color Splash, like how you have to swipe up an action move card on the gamepad to actually get it to do the action, and how it's unnecessary, so I think the Switch version should be simple. No gimmick stuff, just the game and you. So I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please share it on social media, it really does help. If you didn't like this video, let me know why in the comments. I'll have a link to my Discord and other social medias in the description, in case you want to follow me there. Again, I hope you enjoyed and see you.